We've all heard the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. Photos and visual mediums have the power to evoke deep emotions, memories, and ideas. And images or visuals captured by people help them relive their stories, both good and bad. Uh, now, in the digital age that we're all living in, we see these mediums all around us where they have the power to inspire us through storytelling and even influence our decisions. There's power in images and visuals. For example, uh, when I see this photo of children going about their day in Italy, I'm reminded of my experience abroad, and I feel a sense of joy not only to the smiles on the children's faces, um, but of the views of Capri in the background. Now, if I look at this photo, I see people wearing masks in New York City, which looks like it could have been obviously around the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and by looking at this photo, I feel emotions related to the widespread fear and anxiety and worry that was brought on by the pandemic um, and how I felt during the time. Uh, so this is what the assessment method, photo and visual elicitation, aims to collect. It's based on the simple idea of inserting a photograph into a research or assessment interview to evoke emotions and feelings in relation to the data collection process. Um, and in this presentation, we'll go over a quick overview of this assessment technique, uh, provide an analysis of the methodology and how it's used, as well as some limitations. And then we'll go over some examples related to the higher education field. So for a quick overview, uh, photo and visual elicitation is a is where researchers solicit responses and reactions and insights um, from participants by using photographs or other images as stimuli. This is a qualitative interview technique and these visuals can be cartoons, videos, or public displays, um, et cetera. And then this technique results in data that evokes feelings, memories, information, and allows participants in these types of assessment to respond to the visual mediums. Um, it's important to note that images in this type of um, assessment can be researcher generated or participant generated, and each visual medium used has particular benefits, um, but also challenges. Um, and then this has origins within the sociology and anthropology fields. Uh, photo, of visual, photo and visual elicitation creates more comprehensive interviews and concentrates on four areas, such as social organizations and social class, community, identity, and culture, which I feel easily translates to the higher education field. Um, so when photo and visual elicitation is used as a means to assess, it adds depth, richness, and new insights to already existing verbal as well as written data collection methods. Um, it's also important to note the difference between the conventional interviews and photo and visual elicitation used in assessment because it lies in the way participants respond to the symbolic representation in front of them. Um, as a little anatomy 101 lesson, the parts of the brain that process visual information are much older than parts of the brain that process verbal information. So therefore, images evoke deeper parts of human consciousness. So like I said, there are some limitations with this method. Um, the first being that with visual materials, participants may interpret the images differently than the researchers or the assessment givers in this case. Um, it also draws on equity from the viewpoint that not everyone has access to technology or technological devices that have cameras that are used if they're um, user generated. Um, consent can also be a limitation as it is necessary to use the images where people are featured. Um, choosing specific images can also constrain participants' voices. So when thinking about this method in a higher education setting, 
some students might not be able to relate to certain images and therefore resulting in um, limiting results. And these are really important to note if you are conducting a, um, this methodology. So in the higher education assessment process, there are various methods in place that highlight student success, student needs, as well as many other areas for improvement. And when looking at this methodology in the student affairs assessment process, it has the ability to give students knowledge and acknowledge self identities in a way that other assessment methods such as surveys can't. Um, so when using photo and visual elicitation as an assessment method, students' voices are considered in the process since they have a way of kind of explaining their image choices and honestly results in empowering students to express how they're feeling. It also builds a sense of trust with the participants since there is a visual, uh, oh, and, and since there's a visual component, it's a little more interesting. Um, in a sense, it kind of helps um, the participants create a visual narrative. So informed by studies done on the first year college experience in Australia and a study focusing on indigenous college student voices and perspectives, we'll take a deeper look into how this um, can be used in assessment. Um, this method has been used as a means to assess student experiences, as well as recognizes student voices and perspectives with a social justice lens. So as previously mentioned, photo and visual elicitation can be used to assess student experiences. Specifically, looking at college students' first year experiences, this method can be used to gain a more nuanced um, and holistic approach to understanding students as they transition to college. So by asking students to choose images that represent their first year in a university setting and analyzing their responses, student affairs, staff, and faculty can better understand the challenges that disrupt student engagement within their first year of college um, and how to better this experience for their students in the future. Again, through conducting photo and visual elicitation assessment, you're able to actually listen to full emotions and lived experiences through the power of, of image storytelling. So by utilizing this method, um, focusing on student voices and perspectives, you're able to make meaning of the college going experience through students own eyes and their own words. Um, this has a way of considering diverse perspectives and the visual narrative adds another layer of meaning contributing to, to um, student retention. Um, this gives a platform for students to demonstrate their experiences and being intentional and respectful and creative when assessing complex and nuanced aspects of student identity, as well as including new campus partners in the process can greatly improve the effectiveness of assessment efforts and ultimately, again, go back to that student success. So I hope you learned a lot about photo and visual elicitation methodology. Thank you.